Hi, I'm Paul and in today's video we're embarking on an exciting journey. I'm going to start making the switch from data view to obsidian bases across all my vaults. Although bases is still in beta, I'm confident that we can improve as we go. In this series, I'll be migrating each of my obsidian systems one by one, starting with my main vault setup. This will be part one of what will be a comprehensive migration series over the next few weeks. If you've been wondering whether to make the switch yourself or you are curious about how Obsidian Bases compares to DataView, then this series is perfect for you. Join me as we get started with Obsidian Bases. Quick disclaimer. At the time of this recording, Bases is only available to Obsidian Catalyst members who are running Obsidian version 1.9.0 or above. So unless you're tuning in from the future, you'll need at least a minimal 25 USD Insider license to give Bases a try. My Vault Showcase. Here I am inside of my Obsidian Vault and over on the left hand side I've got a Vault folder. So I'll just expand this folder and inside there I've got a whole bunch of capture sources. So the information I capture the most is Blinkist, Books and YouTube. Now I know I've got some more books up in my personal development folder under authors which are not listed in the vault section but I still want to capture those in this area. So if I have a look at my note here vault before bases this was my index page before obsidian bases so I'll just go through it with you quickly. So at the top here I've got a hidden call out. And if I click that, it shows some MetaBind buttons. And these are just quick links to areas inside of the Vault folder. So if I wanted to go to my YouTube Vault, I could just click this one here and it would go navigate to that section. I've also got a back button to go back to the Vault. Below that, I have a random Vault Note button. So when I click this one, it'll just go open a random note inside of my Vault. And that could be useful when I just want to recall some information and I'm not really sure what I want to focus on for the day. So sometimes it's just nice to go over your notes and recall something that you wrote about in the past. So below my random vault note button, I've got a little search, which is a MetaBind input field. And if I type in the word tech, that's going to list a data view query with the keyword tech. So we can see here, I've got a book note called Techno Feudalism. I've got a YouTube note, Making Windows Faster Without Tools by Chris Titus Tech. And I've also got one on DaVinci Resolve. So that's useful if you're trying to fish out a specific note from your vault. I'll just take out that search field and that will reset the results. And then below that, I've got a inline select field, which is a MetaBind input field. And this was useful when I wanted to select YouTube and then show all the notes from the YouTube folder. Now at the moment, it's only showing 10 and I had this MetaBind slider where I could show more or less. Now the problem with data view is it's static data. So you can see here, I've got a few empty creators, which I haven't actually entered. So if I wanted to go change that, I actually have to open the note and change the YAML property. Also, if I wanted to move columns around, I can't easily do so without jumping into the source code and changing my data view query. So that's also not very helpful. So now that we've got Obsidian bases, we've got a lot more more dynamic tools available to us. So let's jump over to my new Vault index page by navigating up here. So you can see I've still kept the nav menu at the top and I've still got the random Vault note button. But below that, I've got a Obsidian bases table, which is showing all of my Vault. So if we just hide the left pane and the right pane, that's gonna give me a bit more space. Now you can see here that I've got a few columns of data and I'm missing a status down here about everything I learned about AI agents in 2024. So I know I've actually completed that one and I've summarized it as well. So I can just select summarized. So unlike data view, I couldn't actually do that without coming into the note. You can also see here that I'm missing a video URL for this note. So if I knew the URL, I could quite easily add it here, or I could just put a note forgot to copy. And then I know that I have to go put that in later. I can also add miss missing topics to the topic column. And if I wasn't happy with the layout of my columns, then I could just click and drag 
to rearrange them to where I would like them. I've also got a sort option so I can click the results here and narrow it down to maybe 10 results which is quite handy. And then if I also wasn't happy with the filter, I could come over here and change the filter conditions or I could add new properties here or take the properties away. So if I didn't want topics, I could remove the topics and I could put them back in again and then I could rearrange them. And then if I wanted to show all the notes again, I could just reset the view. It shows all the vault notes again. So let's open the left pane and have a look now at YouTube. So to see this YouTube vault here, I just simply click this one and select YouTube. And that's going to narrow it down to 76 results. Now you notice I've only got 73 files in there. And the reason for that is my filter is primarily looking for notes that contain the tag YouTube. And then it's also checking whether they're in this folder, but I've got the condition set to any of the following are true. So that way, if the tag is outside the folder, as in up in these folders here or somewhere else in my vault, they're still gonna show up here. So this is quite powerful compared to data view where sometimes I was a little bit restricted. So let's have a look at the books now. So if I select the view here and then select books, you can see that I've got 92 results, but I've only got 18 books in this folder. And this is the same again, it's because I'm grabbing all my book notes with the tag book. And I know that it's got that tag because that's what's contained in my book template. And then I'm also saying check this location here to see if there's book notes inside of there. Now you'll notice that I've still got the creator field here, which is not relevant. And I've also got this vault notes. So what I wanna do is I wanna change this to author. So it's pretty easy to do that. I just come over to properties, uncheck creator, type in author, select author, and then click and drag. And now I have my author. I also don't want it to say vault notes. I want, to, want it to say book notes. So I just right click, rename, call that one book notes. And now I've got a nice view for my books. The only thing missing is the book cover. So I could go add that in if I wanted to. So to do that, I just go properties, type in cover and select cover. Now you'll notice the cover is all the way over on the right hand side here. And it's not actually showing the cover because I don't have the correct syntax. So if we open up five types of people that can ruin your life and go have a look at the cover, you can see here that I've got a little exclamation mark and the size. So if I take that out and just reset it to be a link, then when I come back over to the vault here, you can see that it's still not showing correctly. So what we need to do is we need to create a new property and we'll call this one add property and we put in cover again and then we put in image parentheses with the name of the YAML property which is cover and now we can see that I've got a cover showing. So what I can do from there is I can come to my books down here, configure the view and show as extra tall and now I can see my book cover there. So if you wanted to show your book covers like that and have them over to the left hand side then you can do so like that. The only problem with that is if you've got your covers displayed like I have, then it might not show. So I'll cover that in a future video, but for now, that's how you show your covers. So I'm finding this new basis to be quite useful. You can see that I've still got the search and results for data view underneath, and I'm still keeping my original layout here. And the reason for this is they haven't added a search field up the top here yet, but hopefully in the next release of Obsidian, they'll add a search to search notes within your base. In the next section of the video, I'll showcase how I set this up inside my Obsidian vault. If you're using any of my free or paid vaults, this could be useful, but if not, then feel free to follow along as you may be able to apply these principles in your Obsidian vault. How to set up your vault base. So here we are back inside of Obsidian and we want to create a index page for our vault with the new Obsidian bases. 
Before we do that, we want to create the index landing page. So to do that, jump into the settings, go up to community plugins and make sure you've got the plugin called folder notes by Lost Pole installed. This will allow you to right click, go down to folder note commands and create a markdown folder note, which becomes your index page for that particular part of your Obsidian Vault. So now that you have the index page, the next step is to create your base. Now by default, bases will go to your default note location. So that might be your note lab. So to create a base, you just hit control P or command P on a Mac and type in the word bases and select create new base. What I like to do is put my bases under the spaces folder and I have an index page called bases and you can see here that I've got a new base button, new base discovery and a bases index. So I want to create a new base and if you're interested in seeing how I built this, check out my previous video first look at Obsidian Bases, which explains how I've set this up. So I'm just going to hit new base and then it's going to ask me which folder I want to place it in. I'll just select my spaces bases folder. Then I need to give it a name. So I'm going to call this one Vault. So now you can see I've got a base called Vault in my bases folder. First thing I like to do is change the name of the table. So left click table, left click right arrow, left click configure, call that one vault. This is going to be our parent view for this particular base. So then we need to set up a filter. So we'll keep it pretty basic and we'll say all the following are true. We're gonna select file folder contains, then the name of our folder which will be 04 space vault. And that's going to show everything in the 04 vault folder, which is everything in our vault. Then we can start adding some properties. So properties are just YAML values that you want to add as columns. Left click properties, and you will need some notes with YAML properties in order to do this. So I'm just going to select rating status, video URL, topics, and date added. Now this is totally up to you, but you can place these columns where you would like. I'll just hide the right pane to give us a little bit more space. And we can drag these out if we want more or less room. Same for our URL and topics. And if you don't like the name, so here it says name, you can rename that to notes. So that will be our base vault index. So from here, we want to build out all our different views. So to save time, I'll just build out the books and YouTube. And based on those two examples, you can go build the sources that you're using in your Obsidian Vault. So the first thing you wanna do is come up to the vault, left click, left click the arrow and duplicate the view. And this one's going to be books. So we'll change the name to books. So we wanna change our filter now as well. So we'll click filter. We're gonna change from all the following are true to any of the following are true. We're going to change the first where statement. So I'll just delete this one. And I'm going to select tags, contains, and the name of the tag that I use for all my book notes, which in this case is book. Then I'm gonna select add filter. And I'm going to also choose where the folder path contains for vault. Now you can see there that it's only targeting what's in the books folder with the tag book. So I want to change this to any of the following are true. So that way, if it has the tag book or it's in the folder vault slash books, then it's going to show all of those notes and we can scroll down and check to see if that looks correct. So we have 92 results. Once we're happy with our filter, we can customize our properties for the book view. So we don't need video URL, so we can take that out. We might want to add author. So we'll place the author in and we can rearrange the author. Besides that, we might want to add a cover as well, but I'm not going to do that because I don't have valid syntax for my covers. So the next one will be YouTube. So we will go back to our 
default layout, and then we're just going to select the right arrow, duplicate the view, call this one YouTube, hit enter. Now we want to change our filter. So we'll select filter and we're going to say any of the following are true. So we'll start with tags, contains hash YouTube, and this will just be whatever you use for your captured YouTube notes. And then I'm going to add a filter where the folder contains or vault forward slash YouTube. And we'll just confirm that it's case sensitive against what we've written. So now any of the following are true tags with YouTube or from the folder YouTube. We can see we've got 76 results and I'm pretty happy with those properties. So we'll leave that as is. So now we have our base views we can go over to our vault index page and we can embed the base. So to do that, we exclamation mark, double square brackets, select vault base, and that's going to pull in the vault base into our index page. Now you might have some navigation buttons at the top or some YAML properties like I did, but this is just keeping it quite basic. So now I have my vault index page. And if I want to change to my books, I can change to my books. And if I want to change to YouTube, I can change to YouTube and I can go in and make my dynamic changes from there. And if I want to add some buttons up the top, I can. Otherwise, I have the back button up here, which will take me back to the previous page. Or you can navigate through here and go to your note lab or back to your vault. Or you can create a manage workspace layout. So in this case, I could open up my workspace layouts. You can see here I've got one that says vault. If I load this one, it loads my vault as a workspace layout. So I could save that. So now if I was in my map of contents and I wanted to come back to my vault base, I could just load and go back to my vault index base. So I hope this video has been useful and you've got something out of it. This is the first part of a series of how I'm integrating bases into my Obsidian Vaults. I hope you enjoyed this video showcasing how to integrate Obsidian bases into your vault. Since bases evolves weekly with new features, subscribe for the latest tutorials and let me know in the comments which video you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.